The theme we have for this festival is the theme of what is dance. Well, I think if we want to build the best dance festival or one of the best dance festivals in the Northeast, we go for the best. And we decided to start right there. There is a common ground between us in the contemporary realm. And we have a very common thread, which is passion. Pursuit of perfection excites me. That pursuit of perfection, it enlivens us all. I say that I make art because it's participation in the world of ideas. The world of ideas, if it is allowed to really do what it should do, is a rigorous, scary, challenging place. Well, I think there are a number of uh, reasons that last year's dance festival was really successful. One of the reasons is because of the community contact. We started down on Art Walk. We then had some performances on the canal. And then we had a stage where we were able to show some, some of our local emerging dance companies. I think the other thing was the quality of the performances here at the theater. Uh, Elizabeth Streb and her company did an extraordinary job. The public, I think, got something they didn't expect. And people have a preconceived notion of, of dance. And I think Elizabeth Streb exploded that. We are ecstatic to sponsor the 2011 Dance Festival at Nazareth College. We work and live in the community, so it benefits our, our, our actual employees as well as the, the customers we serve. It really hits a sweet spot of uh, excellence. Uh, the company Evadrilla USA, which is the parent company of, of RG&E, uh, comes in with a culture of excellence. And so we try to align ourselves with things that are also excellent in the community, and it's definitely a world-class event. And now I'd like to introduce a true advocate of Arts art. and culture are very important to the development of a community. The goal here is to establish Nazareth and Rochester as a regional dance venue in the northeast of the United States. The relationship with the Bessie Awards uh, is very important to establishing us as a real center for summer dance. The performance award goes to Ms. The Bessies are New York's major dance awards. This is the first year ever in the 25-year history of the Bessies that we have done a juried award where we have asked a jury of major choreographers to choose a work that they feel is exciting and adventurous and some new thinking that's happening in American dance. This is the first year that we have an award that will come with a touring gig, an ability to get out of the city and to go to a new audience and to bring your ideas to a new audience. I hope that in the future, it starts and premieres at the Nazareth, and then it continues across the country. I would give last year uh, uh, an A, and uh, I think now we go for an A+. It is the opening weekend. We have performances on the stage by Garth Fagan Dance, followed by Rochester City Ballet, who will be doing this interesting piece with Future Point. Um, in the closing weekend, we have Bill T. Jones. But in between those two, we are going to have a number of free events for the public. One of the highlights of the week uh, is a conversation between uh, Bill T. Jones and Garth Fagan about dance. What is dance? And last year we had a similar conversation that Garth and, and Elizabeth Streb participated in. It was, I think, one of the highlights of the week. Because there's really where you see the artistic mind working, what they're trying to achieve, how they achieve it. Because, well, what is going to happen next? So I think I... I, I really appreciate that in his first festival, Don Braveman had the courage and the integrity to bring an artist of Elizabeth Streb's quality, but of her avant-garde nature as to what she does compared to what most people think is and is not dance, you see. And that sets, 
sets up the festival as being courageous, of understanding quality, and similarly we bring in Bill T. Jones, and we are the hometown team. I think it's really exciting for Rochester City Ballet to be on the program at Nazareth College Art Center Dance Festival for the very first time. Make a picture in the air, make a picture, picture, and picture, picture, make a picture. This festival is going to be, be bringing audiences from all around the region and maybe even out of state, so we're hoping to make new friends by performing on this program. We are opening up a brand new relationship with Future Point Dance. This past fall I had the awesome opportunity to see Future Point for the first time perform and I knew instantly that I wanted to find a way to collaborate with this company. Future Point Dance is very modern based. Rochester City Ballet, our base is ballet. But there is a common ground between us in the contemporary realm and we have a very common thread which is passion. So Future Point Dance Company will be performing on the first half of our program and Rochester City Ballet will be closing the program and then the last small piece of the evening will be a collaboration between Future Point Dancers and Rochester City Ballet Dancers. The three main pieces we're going to be doing, uh, the first piece is Push and Pull, which is an audience favorite. And it was really just an expression of the music brought to life through movement. How to Break a Heart was a new piece that I created last year. It's to the poetry of Emily Autumn, and um, the music is Bach, and it's, it's a great piece about, it's about relationships. Then we're closing with Luma Voce, which is one of my absolute favorite pieces that the Rochester City Ballet performs. It's, so it's a very intimate piece performed by five dancers. It's definitely an honor as an up-and-coming choreographer to share or be a part of a festival that includes people like Garth Fagan and Bill T. Jones. Not only do you have one Tony Award winner, you have two Tony Award winners. It's an opportunity for us to learn and to grow, but I also think it's an opportunity for the community and the greater dance community to see what Rochester has to offer. And really, I believe Rochester City Ballet is a tour de force and won't be long before we'll be taking the world stage also. The dance audiences in town know us, but there are lots of people who are gonna come to the festival who are not exactly dance fans. They'll get a chance to see it. And one woman told me that her husband <laughs> never goes to dance concerts with her. Addie came to our concert last year. Addie couldn't wait to come back to the next one because, well, he saw movement. He saw people dancing, not people pretending to be swans or ponies or whatever, <laughs> you know, but he saw people dancing and he got contemporary themes and universal themes. Perfect on the lift. We're doing the opening night of the festival at Nazareth this year and we're looking forward to it to really start off on a high note. Alas, I cannot give you any specifics because I have video and a live performer um, involved in the piece, a live musician involved in the piece. I'm doing this dance specifically for the festival. Okay, the arm thing was just beautiful. Everybody's arms was at the same time, but we will have until ban if a piece I did in 1990 that we are restoring for this occasion. And it's a work that speaks to the times, to these times, as it did to the 90s. <laughs> you know. The smiles that people have on their faces, the intellectual puzzlements, 
All of that, to me, are rich and good. The questions I get asked about the pieces, you know. Yeah, the last one. It's easy to do shallow dances that tell you everything in one fell swoop. But like a great piece of art, pieces of art I have in my home, I look at and I look at and I look at, and I'm always getting new information from them. And I know them. Good. So I like dances to be like that. And I love to uplift people because the mortgages have to be paid. There are problems, there are always problems. And if you can go in the theater for two hours and table those problems, you're not gonna solve them, but it might refresh you to the point where you might be able to go back home and solve them. It's, it, it can change the flavor of your day, you know. And I would love to change the flavor of all my audience's day. Good, great, wonderful, brilliant, or indifferent. And the pursuit of perfection excites me. That pursuit of perfection, it enlivens us all. It puts us at our best game. Bill T. Jones is a choreographer. He's also a major American thinker. Bill T. Jones has been at the forefront of modern dance for, I would say, close to 30 years now, um, starting in the late 70s, early 80s. He, um, you know, he has always brought his full self to his work. When I first heard we were going to Nazareth and we were going to be performing there, I remember that Rochester used to be the big city. We lived 43 miles south of there in uh, way out in the country, and it's called um, Wayland, New York. It's in Steuben County. I knew potato picking, I knew fields, but then Rochester was the city. Um, now, here I am coming back after having worked and lived in cities all over the, the world. Uh, coming back to it, it, I have a lot of feelings, very complicated feelings. Hopefulness is the, is the first one. Because we don't have it. With two thirty-threes. How would I introduce myself? I would say that the audience is about to see the work of a man whose identity was forged in his body. First, as an African American child from um, migrant families, then as a member of a community in transition, like so much of America was in the fifties and sixties, going through the counterculture, a man who found. Um, uh, an identity in a relationship, a primary relationship, which was problematic. The partner dies in somewhat tragic circumstances, um, but the company continues on and this man has to find another identity. They will see um, the, the results of experimentation about what movement is, what it can do. Can movement tell about intimacy between two disparate people? Can movement speak about history? Can movement speak about psychological um, ghettos and other types of ghettos? That's what they will be feeling. They will see a company that is brilliant, uh, multiracial, multi-ethnic. And, and they're watching the clock. They're watching the clock Bill T. Jones was the only company I really wanted to dance for. His work is political. His work is non-conventional. I think a lot of times in dance, we get wrapped up in, in the lyricism and how beautiful um, dance is. And I think we play with that idea, but it's not our, our, our focal point. Um, that there is beauty in the avant-garde, that there is beauty in the, uh, in the awkwardness and in the, in the quirkiness sometimes. And, um, we just try and develop all of those layers. We're bringing a show uh, which is actually uh, recreations of two important duets that I made with my deceased co-founder, of Arnie Zane. Right, those two works um, were rooted in the questions that Arnie and I found in exploring trying to dance together. 
What we did, the way we handled each other, the way we inhabited the space, it had to be very honest. It's what, this was our aesthetic. We thought the poetry was in that kind of representing of reality. Arnie is no longer with us. I am white-haired, much older, and we have young people now doing these works. And here I am looking at it, and actually in a way seeing the shadow of Arnie in the character of Eric Montes, my dancer now, and myself in this young man, Tully Jackson. Um, that was really spooky, very, very, very touching. This asks a question about the nature of personal work, personal performance work or time-based work. Can it live? They do live, they live quite beautifully. It was Harris, Janie May. Well, I'd be interested to know what your dance community or your dance lovers think of this kind of grappling, pose-oriented, uh, constructivist choreography. It is not designed to be charming and winning and sexy. It is not about the legs being extended sensuously or people do, jumping high in beats. It's not about spectacle. What will that mean to your Nazareth audience? I suspect they're adventurous knowing what they have done in their first season with Elizabeth. It sometimes maybe has similar questions about what lyricism is, about where poetry exists. Repetition. So now the proposition is one of the Lincoln works. The first thing I wanted to do was sort of make a sketch, which would sort of make clear for me some of the questions I had about history, about what dance and oratory could do together. A rumination about history, looking back and trying to look at the present through a mirror of the past. So you, you hear my voice inside of it asking, can I really know Mr. Lincoln? Can I know history? In a way, it's like, can I know us? Can I really even know where I'm living now? All right, that's, that's a hip, that's heavy lifting. That is, it's gonna be hard. Uh, Just today in the paper I was reading about the federal government challenging a law in the state of Indiana that would take away certain rights from poor women in Planned Parenthood. There's now this problem between the federal government trying to control the um, state government. That's one of those ideas from the Civil War that has never really been resolved. Maybe it is the hallmark of, um, of, of democracy, that there will always be this battle between that which is local and that which is federal and, and uh, all-inclusive. How lucky are we to be able to, to do a program called Body Against Body, which is a complete departure from Serenade the Proposition. Serenade is what I personally like to call classic beauty on stage. It's very clean, as opposed to you can feel the, the grit in Body Against Body. You're leaving the theater questioning things and ideas and concerns that you had, and maybe you see them in a different way, or maybe Bill proposed them um, in a different way, and, and um, you're left thinking. And um, dare I say entertain? I, I think it's possible to be entertained and to have some sort of intellect going on. That You don't have to have one or the other, that they both can be uh, there together. I say that I make art because it's participation in the world of ideas. The world of ideas, if it is allowed to really do what it should do, is a rigorous, scary, challenging place. If you're going to participate with people at their peak of asking questions, gaining information, making things, you have to be on your game. Can we work out that the, the uh... Uh, was it the father pointing? The father's died. This is the mother. Who? 
That's what I want my life to be about. I want my life to be about. We shall overcome. Damn, what did he mean, we shall overcome? Because a lot of times I'm really depressed. I don't think we have overcome. But when I look around, things have changed. And what's more, there's a potential for things to change even more so. One of the things I found in the Lincoln works is a, that uh, the, the problem of democracy is like a train that has no destination. It just goes, right? But you're either on that train or you ain't nobody. You're on that train or you ain't nobody. I applaud Rochester. I think Rochester, I think Nazareth as a leader is somebody. And uh, let, let's, not, um, let's not sit and cry about what has been lost. Um, let's get up and do, and help people do. And I'm speaking about a community like Rochester. It's a, a decision that's being made by leaders that somehow culture um, tills the soil, lets air get in, lets the earthworms come. I call artists the earthworms. They make the ground ready for things to grow again. I think Rochester and the Nazareth Festival, this is that impulse that um, there's something perennial and green and always growing that, that, are, that is in people who want to make performance, who want to dance. And that festival actually providing the water, the sunlight for this to happen, strong plants, strong trees in the form of organizations, in the form of community leaders, in the form of audiences who are excited about ideas um, will come out of what they're doing there.